G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Meter here. In a previous video, I went through the design process of the encoded multi-item sorter. A revolutionary concept in storage tech that enabled fast item categorizing. Later on in this video, we will put this concept to the test against the chess monsters of the Hermitcraft server. But first, the basic principle is that you would assign items to categories by putting them inside of a chest like this. Then, if you input a shulker box that has this item in the first accessible slot, like this, the shulker box will have that item taken out, sorted into the right category, and then that shulker box will appear in a hopper corresponding to that category. One of the uses for this technology is to make a multi-item sorter where you can assign items to category like these golden apples, then input them inside of a shulker box like so, and this shulker box will be sorted into the slice corresponding to where that golden apple was in those chests, then the shulker box is placed down, unloaded, and stored inside of one of these storage slices. So we should see, there we go, we've got our gone apples coming through into here. However, a much more powerful use case is the parallel entity item sorter from how to build the ultimate storage. By using our categories in a way which ensures that each item type only has a single category that is assigned to, when I input shulker boxes of two different items, like these redstone blocks and pistons, these boxes can be sorted into separate categories and then unloaded simultaneously in parallel. This allows us to sort both of the item entities simultaneously, effectively doubling the sorting speed of our storage. However, there is one slight problem with using the encoded multi-item sorter to parallel entity item sort. Because we use only a single minecart to perform the actual search among the categories, we have to wait for that minecart to cycle all the way to the end and then back again when sorting each and every shulker box. And this is extremely slow. The result is that we can only sort a shulker box every 4 seconds. So in order to make this machine faster at sorting shulker boxes, we're going to need to have more hopper minecarts being cycled simultaneously, and this turns out to be an insanely complicated task. But fortunately, this is not a problem that we need to solve, because some other very intelligent people have solved the problem already. This is a hopper speed encoder, and it uses some pretty complicated timings and mechanics that I myself am not very familiar with. This particular design is supposed to take shulker boxes full of items and then convert those shulker boxes of items into binary codes for those items. In contrast, our encoded multi-item sorter is only a unary encoder, so it simply takes a shulker box with an item in it, then converts that into a unary slice which is the unloader which unloads that shulker box. This means we can quite easily take this binary encoder and then convert it into a unary encoder and have it function exactly the same way as the encoded multi-item sorter where we have these categories of items and each item is assigned to only one category. And then the absolute beauty of this machine is that by using multiple hopper minecarts it can sort the shulker boxes at hopper speed, meaning it can sort about 2.5 shulker boxes per second. This means that we can sort our shulker boxes at 10 times the speed of the original encoded multi-item sorter. And the best part is that it should be fairly simple to implement. Wait a minute, what the heck is this? Is this an update suppress activator rail on top of a regular curve rail? Uh, yes, yes it is. Who the heck decided to put this here? Okay, so it turns out that we actually do need these activator rails in order to actually activate the hopper minecarts again. Because what happens is when they reach the end, they get deactivated when they touch this powered activator rail. Then they go into the hopper minecart silos where they are locked and so they don't transfer these items through the whole stack. However, they need to be activated again before they get run through the piston bolt. And so they snap to these activator rails, then they snap to the curve rails, and then they fly along the piston bolt. However, this is certainly not a very survival friendly setup. Fortunately, there have been some innovations in the world of piston bolts by a fellow Wavetech member, Karbsner, 
who discovered this new layout for piston bolts. And what's important to note here is that we can actually put an activator rail right here in order to reactivate the hopper minecart for our encoder. So applying this new piston bolt concept leading into the piston bolt for our encoder, and we obtain a much more survival friendly solution for unlocking the hopper minecarts as they move. Now the next step is to make sure that our sorted shulker box gets redirected to the correct slice where the box can be unloaded. When we detect that the item in our shulker box matches a particular one of these sets, we will get a single signal coming out of the bottom of the encoder right here. We then need to take into account that items sorted in the very first chest will have to run through all of the other slices before they get to the end to this instant dropper line. So we need to make sure that the signal sent from this very first slice matches up with the instant dropper line at the very moment that that shulker box passes through the dropper line. The result is that we get this temporal mapping where the delay between the item being detected and the signal reaching the instant dropper line is proportional to how close that item is to the start of the piston bolt. So an item that's sorted at the very end of the piston bolt, it has to travel a very small distance before it ends up in this system which puts it in the instant dropper line. That means we need less delay for the signal indicating where that item needs to go. This means if I was to input a whole bunch of different shulker boxes with different items like so, and have a look at the delays, we can see the signals start at different times, but they will always reach the dropper line at exactly the same time. And the result is that every shulker box has been sorted into the correct slice, and we are unloading multiple items simultaneously like so. This finally brings us to the brand new Hopper Speed Encoded Parallel Entity Item Sorter. This will be the basis of the new sorting system for Wavetech's brand new main storage. We have perfect 8 game tick input stabilization as well as a comparator update detector to activate the system perfectly every single time a box enters. We've even got a failure detection which can perfectly detect when the minecarts lose these minecart dummy items that you can see in their last 3 slots. So what this system does is it will take out the 3 minecarts in the last 3 slots of the minecart and if it does not detect that final minecart in the last slot, then the machine knows that something went wrong, and it can automatically shut itself off and request help from the player. So if I go ahead and remove a single minecart from here, this indicates that this minecart must have failed to either pick up the item or the shulker box, and as a result, the system down there has now taken out an extra minecart from here, so if I untick freeze, we will immediately detect the something wrong and then shut off the system and sound the alarm. Now the player can go ahead and check if there's anything wrong with the item sets. The best part is that we fully unload the minecarts, then fill them up again, and then remake the dummy items in the last three slots, meaning that our minecarts are all automatically fixed even though it sounded the alarm. And if no problems are found, the player can just hit this button and restart the machine. This failure detection is a very important component of this machine, because you can imagine if anything goes wrong with these hopper minecarts, and we start missing minecarts in these slots, then problems can cascade out of control exponentially. But if we can detect the sign is going wrong immediately and shut off the machine, we can prevent those issues from cascading out of control and make them much easier to fix. If we look underneath, we have these enormous buffers that fill up with our shulker boxes that need to be unloaded. And the first item unloaded designed by me and Rapscallion. These will simply unload the first item found inside of each shulker box. Our items are then all unloaded into this item stacking array. All of this gets explained in detail in how to build the ultimate storage, so go ahead and check out that video. But basically, what we have here is the ability to categorize entire shulker boxes full of items into different sorting methods at 2.5 shulker boxes every single second. And our different sorting categories can include things such as items sorted at 2 times hopper speed, or items sorted at 1 times hopper speed, or even 16 stackables 
which can be stacked separately up to a stack size of exactly 10. All of these factors combined are enough to convince me that this should be the most powerful item sorter in Minecraft. But it turns out that we can optimize this machine even further. But before we get into the mathematics of elevating the encoded multi-item sorter to god tier storage tech, let's take a bit of a break and hunt for some chess monsters on the Hermitcraft server. Because if we want to truly prove that this is in fact the most powerful item sorter in Minecraft, we have to give it a challenge worthy of god tier storage tech. Because the problem is, if I were to just take items from the WaveTech server, because we already have a main storage with all the items being sorted neatly into categories, the items on the server aren't really going to present a challenge for our storage tech. However, on the Hermitcraft server, chest monsters run wild. So let's catch some for the ultimate storage tech challenge. In order to help us out a little, I've gone ahead and installed a hack client, which is perfect for locating things such as storages. Because of course, the hermits really like to hide their chest monsters out of sight. Wait a minute, what have we got over here? I see Doc and Ren are not being very subtle with their chest monster. Perfect. Let's collect all of these up. Then we chuck all of the shulker boxes into a chest like so. Then in creative mode, we can use control middle click to copy the chests with their inventories and put them once again into a barrel and then we can copy this barrel into a hotbar and then save the hotbar. Now if we look into our hotbar menu we can then obtain our saved inventory with all of our chest monsters. And would you look at this and Doc and Ren even went ahead and buried some of their chest monsters underneath their decorations. And that is more items for me. Now, if you're looking for chest monsters on the Hermitcraft server, one of the better places probably to look would be wherever Scar is building. If we enable our inventory toggle... Hmm, that looks very inconspicuous. Ah, what have we got here? One of Scar's wild chest monsters, I see. We should probably approach carefully so as not to spook it. I think I have an idea. There we go, the chest monster won't see me coming. And my god, this is the absolute mother load of chest monsters. Look at all these shulker boxes, all with just random mixtures of items. This is a storage tech's dream right here. You're damn right, yoink. And would you look at that, I'm resorting to using my own storage tech just to collect Scar's chest monster. Now isn't this a thing of beauty? Every single one of Scar's chests burst open with all the items frozen into the air. So what my plan is, is to go into survival mode, teleport all of the items towards me, and now I'm going to use this box loading system to semi-automatically load all the items into boxes. So if I slash tick unfreeze, I can go ahead and just throw all the items in. Blimey, the amount of work needed to create this much chaos is astronomical. There we go. Scar's ultimate chess monster. Somebody also quite well known for manufacturing chaos is of course Green. Green has even been kind enough to put all of his chess monsters in the one place. My my, isn't that beautiful? I feel as though this is a much more fitting way to decorate the premises, don't you think? We've even got ourselves some chess monster chandeliers. Alright, enough shenanigans, let's bring the items over and load them up into the boxes. And with that, we have... Green's chest monster all wrapped up. And then we have Mumbo Jumbo, who despite having his own item sorting array, proceeds to still leave chest monsters all over the server. I just don't know what the hermits have against storage tech. Alright, a little while later and I've collected up just about every chest monster that I could find and then fit into a single hot bar. I just need to take a moment to appreciate how awesome it is that the hermits make these maps available to the public. Because this means that people like us can explore their builds and of course harvest resources for scientific research. So here we have ourselves the baseline test. I've just lined up all of the items that I just collected from the Hermitcraft server inside of these chests. And we're going to unload every single shulker box at hopper speed one at a time. Alright, with everything set up and ready to go, let's reset the counter and then break this redstone block. And we should start unloading our items. And we can see the items appearing in this hopper right here. 
After about two hours of tick warping this setup, we have a total time of about 100 hours and we have sorted 875,000 items in total across 922 shulker boxes. This will form the baseline for the sample that we obtained from Hermitcraft. A little while later, and I'm currently setting up the encoded multi-item sorter for testing. Now the problem here is that I'm using Lightmatica to paste the machine in automatically. And right now, I'm in the stage of trying to get it functional for testing. The problem is, if you use Lightmatica to paste in a machine like this automatically, it is quite likely that it's going to break on the first few runs. So right now, it's detected there's a problem and it's sounding the alarm, so we need to go in and figure out what's wrong. Our first step of debugging will be to look underneath here and we can clearly see that some of the slices are broken. What we want to do is go to these red parts, click off these levers right here, and then we can hit this mechanism a few times to get the items to clear out of the system. Now if we look inside of these droppers, we should be able to see items that might not belong here, such as these shulker boxes. Yep, look at this. And we're missing a dummy item right here, and we're also missing some oak signs. Ah, found where the oak signs went. How on earth did they get here? Alright, if we go ahead and reactivate these. We can look underneath and we can see all of these are fine for now. We still have this last slice broken and this slice right here broken. If we take a look inside of the chest corresponding to our broken slices, this one is missing dummy items, so I want to push in some dummy items. There we go, I heard the piston retract. There we go. We want to set it right there. So if I remove a single item, you can hear the piston retract. If I add a single item, it extends. That has effectively fixed that slice. If we go to the next busted slice and have a look inside of the chest for it, we can see that we're missing some pointed dripstone right here. So if I go ahead and replace that like so, you can hear the piston extend. And now we have fixed that slice. Looking through these droppers, we should also expect to find some rubbish that doesn't actually belong here. So these are items that probably came out of the shulker boxes that were being sorted, especially given that they're not ending up in the correct slices. And after scratching my head rage is trying to figure out why this simply won't work after pasting, I finally realized I forgot to put the three dummy items in each one of these droppers. If Masa, the creator of Lightmatica is listening, please enable server side support for pasting inventories. Alright, now that we finally have that fixed, when I input a box, like so, we should see the filter activate and then reset. Perfect. And our item should drop right into the correct slice, like so. Perfect. And just to verify that my pain is finally over, let's input a slightly larger set of boxes. And hopefully this works now. Oh, that doesn't sound good. God damn it! I forgot that the 16 stackables needs to substitute a 16 stackable dummy item. Ugh! I've got the 16 stackable dummy item inside of this dropper. Hopefully now it will work properly. So if we go ahead and restart. We'll start sorting boxes again. Looks like it's working properly again. Alright, it's finally sorted that little sample that I put in without any hiccups. And so now I'm confident that we can go to our very first test. What I've got here is the item layout in the encoded multi-item sorter from how to build the ultimate storage. Later on when we get into the mathematics of how this item layout works, we'll see that this particular item layout is very suboptimal for our item sorting. But first, I want to run a test with this layout to compare with the more optimal solution we come up with later on. So if I go ahead and hit this button, I just reset the counter for my alt account, Mr. Meter. Here we have the massive sample that we collected from the Hermitcraft server. We've restarted all the counters and now we can start the sorting input. There we go, now we're sorting the shulker boxes. Finally, after about an hour of tick warp in the new encoded multi-item sorter, we can see that it took roughly 12 hours to sort those items. So already we're sorting items about 10 times faster than the baseline. But as I've been alluding to, it may even be possible to push this even further. 
But to understand how, let us look at a simple example. Let us say that these colors of concrete are the only items that I want to sort and store inside of my storage. And my item sorter has two shortcut box unloaders which can run independently. What the encoded multi-item sorter does is that it has chests filled with items which say that if a shulker box contains that item, then that shulker box will be unloaded in the corresponding shulker box unloader every single time. So what the encoded multi-item sorter does is it finds the first item that it can access, which in this case is this orange concrete. It takes out a single one of that item, checks to see which one of these chests contains that item, which is this one, and so now, it will place down this shulker box inside of this shulker box unloader and it will only remove the orange concrete. Once the orange concrete has been removed, it will then go to the next item, which is the magenta concrete. We take out a sample of that item, check to see which slice that item is assigned to, which is this one right here. Then we remove all the magenta concrete and we keep recycling this shulker box until it is completely empty. Now let us assume that for any set of items we input to our storage to be sorted, that for every stack of lime concrete, we would expect two stacks of yellow concrete, four stacks of light blue concrete, eight stacks of magenta concrete, and 12 stacks of orange concrete. How should we assign those items to the slices of our encoded multi-item sorter such that the total time it takes to sort the average sorting operation is minimized? With the previous item layout from how to build the ultimate storage, all we did was rank all of the item types from the largest expected count all the way to the smallest expected count and then lined up all the item types and then assign them to the slices of the encoded multi-item sorter with the largest going into the first chest, the next largest going to the second chest, and then looping back to the start until every item has been assigned. However, this is not the best way to assign our items given the information that we got from our input. Because if we add up all of the items which had to be sorted in this slice, and all the items that had to be sorted in this slice, you can clearly see that we get 12 plus 4 plus 1 items, which is 17 in total, which will need to be sorted by this unloader. Well, this slice is 8 plus 2 equals only 10 items that it needs to be sorted in this unloader. That means that this unloader on this side will take almost twice as long to sort the items assigned to its item set than the items assigned to this unloader. So is there a better way to assign the items such that both of these unloaders get approximately the same amount of items for the sorting operation that we expect? It turns out that this problem has a name. This problem is called multi-way number partitioning. And there are a few complicated ways to actually solve this problem. However, the particular algorithm that we will be applying here is called bin packing. Here is a simple Python script which uses the bin packing module to solve the problem for us. So we've just set up the problem. We've got our 12 orange, 8 magenta, 4 blue, 2 yellow, and 1 green. And we are packing it into a total of two bins. So if I run this program, we will now see the optimal way to pack our items is now orange with yellow then magenta blue and green together in the other chest and if we look at the result we have our 12 plus 2 equals 14 in this slice then we have 8 plus 4 plus 1 gives 15 in the other slice as you can clearly see this new assignment is much more efficient because we have drastically reduced the sorting time of this slice whilst also increasing the sorting time of this slice to bring the overall sorting time down. So there is the basic principle of how we're going to improve the encoded multi-item sorter even further. But then the question is how can you even figure out 
what you expect to sort in any given sorting operation. Once again, we turn to Skyrising's trusty inventory scanner which automatically scans an entire Minecraft world and provides a total item count for every single item that it encounters. This particular spreadsheet breaks down all the items found in each inventory that is found on the Hermitcraft Season 8 world download. So you can clearly see you can have multiple entries of the same item like Obsidian. This is actually the Obsidian stored in Dockham 77's Obsidian Farm. And you can see that it is clearly stored inside of full shulker boxes because we get exactly 1728 Obsidian in every single one of these entries. So what we have in this list is the location which indicates a physical inventory placed down in the world and then the sub-location is a shulker box inside of that inventory which contains an item such as our obsidian in this particular case. However, when we want to consider the items that we actually want to sort in our item sorter, we don't want to include things that are already sorted into bulk such as this obsidian. So what I went and did was make a program that would scan the entire spreadsheet and delete any entries which happen to be a multiple of exactly 1728. This would effectively remove any instance of full shulker boxes inside of some sort of bulk storage. The result is a much more accurate representation of the items we might expect in our item sorter along with their effective quantities. We can then load these lists into this Python program made up by my good friend Punchster to automatically produce all of our chest partitions. And then with a little bit of help from Phrygian Storage Tech Aid, we already have all of our partitions now in the form of chest inside of a Minecraft world. So in theory, I should be able to drop this new encoding into the encoded multi-item sorter and get even better results. Now we can transfer our brand new item set over to the test server. Make sure that we fill all these droppers up with the correct amount of dummy items. Set up a new counter for a direct comparison. Input our sample that we got from the Hermitcraft server. And just watch as these minecarts tear through all these shulker boxes. If we take a look at the hopper counter we can see our sorting speed increasing very quickly. Let's give it the good old 100 hour tick warp and check back to see what the total sorting time was. Alright the tick warp's finished let's find out how it went. And, oh, this time it took 11.6 hours to sort the entire item set, which unfortunately is only a 2% boost in speed. I was hoping for a bit more than that, but still, in my mind, the encoded multi-item sorter should be the best sorting input for a main storage for a massive technical server such as WaveTech. Because we can sort 2.5 shulker boxes every second, with minimal time from mixed boxes at the input, the items coming out of a water stream at the bottom, as well as the ability to categorize item types into different sorting schemes. And on top of all that, we still obtain the parallel entity item sorting, which allows our storage to sort items at lightning fast speeds. Applying the analysis again for the WaveTech server, and we obtain what should be the optimal encoded multi-item sorter layout for the WaveTech server which gives us the final piece in the puzzle known as WaveTech's brand new main storage. So hopefully, soon, we'll be able to build the most grandest of main storages on the WaveTech survival server, which should hopefully revolutionize the way that we play the game. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time.